the only abortion clinic in Mississippi is facing a shutdown by the state. Arkansas now passing the toughest abortion law in the country. Our goal needs to be to end all abortions in Mississippi. We are now going back to that situation before, which is that unless you can travel, you cannot get access to abortion. The idea of closing 80% of the clinics in Texas is to make it impossible for most Texas women to even try to have an abortion. The highest stakes abortion case in more than 20 years could be heading its way. And the outcome of that case, and thus the very meaning of safe and legal access to abortion in America, is very far from certain. I have never seen anything like we are experiencing right now. There have been hundreds of restrictions on reproductive rights passed in the states just in the last few years, and we've been working night and day to block as many of them as we can. This fight spans the entire globe. We use the law to hold governments all over the world accountable to their obligations to fulfill and protect the rights of women. At the center, we work to promote reproductive rights as fundamental rights. It is critical that all women everywhere around the world have access to safe, legal, affordable, comprehensive reproductive health care. Whether you live in the United States or Kenya or Colombia or Nepal, a woman's reproductive health care is essential to her life. It's essential to her health, her dignity, and her ability to live the life that she wants. And that's why the Center for Reproductive Rights does not have boundaries in the work that we do. Much of the research that we do in Tanzania is around forced pregnancy testing for girls in school and the girls being expelled once they have been found to be pregnant. The testing is done in a way to ambush the girls so that the girls do not know that they will be tested on a particular day. Now, once the girls get pregnant and are expelled from school, there is no re-entry program back into formal education. We are partnering with local organizations to engage in a process of changing of the policies and the laws. And if successful, the potential impact is that we'll have a greater number of women remaining in school and completing their formal education. An empowered, educated woman means an empowered and more developed Tanzania as a whole. We welcome you all and thank you very, very much for being here this morning, uh, Nancy Northup. There have been over 200 state laws passed in the last three years designed to make it harder or impossible for women to act. We work on a wide range of reproductive rights issues internationally, from child marriage to access to contraception to the treatment of pregnant schoolgirls. But here in the United States, the issue is very focused right now in the battle over access to abortion services. In Mississippi, the center has been fighting in the courts to keep open the last abortion clinic in the state. The state passed a law that was explicitly designed to shut down this last clinic. And up to now, we've been successful. But with a court order, all of that could change. Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Parker. I'm one of two physicians who travels here to provide abortion care for women. As you may know, the state's been trying to close this clinic. Uh, and we've been fighting that. And to date, we're still open, and as long as we're open, we're going to be here to provide care for you. In order to do that... If they were to close our doors, 
it's it's gonna hurt a lot of women. It's gonna it's gonna set us back. This is just not a place that women come. This is a place that women need. One of the most essential things about being human is having agency and making decisions about your life. And for a woman, the, one of the most essential aspects of agency is being able to determine when and whether or not to become a parent. Um, motherhood should be voluntary. As a woman herself who was faced with the option of having an abortion, for me, that allowed me to develop, go to school, decide who I wanted to be, and turn into the woman I am now. Um, and for many of these women, I know that's allowed them to delay childbearing to a time when they were able to um, afford to have a child or wanted to have a child. We're making a difference every day that those doors get unlocked. We're making a difference in some women's lives every single day. The politicians, they don't see the women. Uh, I think they have no idea what women go through in making these decisions. I wish they could see when a woman sitting across from me looks at me and her eyes say to me, whatever you say, don't say no to me. Because all of her life's hopes, dreams, and aspirations for herself, and in many cases for her family, are hinging upon whether or not she can make this decision and follow through with it, and thereby position herself to do what's best for her and her family. What's at stake here are our lives. That's, that's what's at stake the lives of the women in this country. I want to live in a country that no matter where they live, women have access to the resources to parent uh, the children that they want, uh, to prevent the pregnancies that they don't want, and when necessary to end the pregnancies that they want and their health won't allow. I want to make my own decisions about my body, about my family. I don't want the state of Mississippi telling me what I can and cannot do with my health and with my reproductive rights. It is uh, death by a thousand blows. It, it is a situation where states are passing an increasing amount of restrictive laws. And as a result, uh, a woman's right to choose depends on her zip code and we cannot let that happen. The current battles for reproductive rights will reach their conclusion in the courts, in Congress, and in human rights bodies around the world. We are ready for the next battle in the Supreme Court. We're going to be ready with our allies. We're going to be ready with the arguments. We're going to be ready with the voices of women to say you can't turn the clock back. The Women's Health Protection Act is a national response to this crisis that we're seeing around the states. This day is profoundly significant. We are announcing today the introduction of the Women's Health Care Protection Act. More than half of all American women now live in the 27 states where there are serious harassing laws that restrict a woman's right to choose. We don't need the interference. We don't want the interference. We shouldn't have the interference of politicians who have their own agenda. This is historic legislation. It would protect safe and legal abortion for all women across the United States. And through our Draw the Line campaign, the center has galvanized hundreds of thousands of people behind it. This is definitely a turning point. Women are saying that we're not going to play defense any longer. We are going to go on the offense, and we are going to uphold our constitutional rights. The Center for Reproductive Rights is at the forefront of this battle. The strong support that we've received for this proposal should send a message to the courts that there is growing momentum politically and legally against this unwarranted and unnecessary interference with women's rights. I am so honored to work with the Center for Reproductive Rights, which envisioned this law and did the outreach to bring the coalition together. The center's been there from day one. Uh, and without the center, I wouldn't be here, this clinic would not be here, and most of the clinics in this country wouldn't be here. I think it's important for all of us to recognize that this is a long-term struggle. We will not turn the tide until we have everybody working on this issue together. The center needs support in the same way that the center supports organizations and women on the ground. We need all of our supporters to stand up and get loud and make it clear that the promise of reproductive freedom is something that we are going to fight for. And we're going to keep fighting to make sure that everywhere in the United States and around the world, the 
that promise is realized for women. Every single one of us. Every single person alive. Depends on reproductive health care. In one way or another. Every single one of us has a stake in this fight. And we need every single one of you. We need your support. We need your voice. We need everyone all over the world to stand up and say, My word. My word. My word. My word. Is the last word on my reproductive health care.